Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Just give me a second here to set up this wonderful technology. And to catch my breath. Thank you for this song. Um, and I, I wish you could play it again at the end of my talk. Because... <laughs> thank you. Because... Oh. <laughs> Well, it's just, it, it's amazing that um, just the words we sang today, truth, clear, and still. You, you, I did not send you a copy of my notes for my talk today. And then the song that you played, you know, um, Faith of the Heart, right? And that road, that road. And, and so, usually, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm still astounded by the wonderful connections that is, in, you know, in this universe, in my life, more than I could ever, ever imagine or, or plan in my own life. And so uh, I'm so happy to see everybody. Usually we have someone up here who introduces the speaker. And, and I want to thank Martha for the reading, Heritage of Happiness. Last week you all had some homework to do. Uh, Reverend Bonnie gave you some homework, right? And that was to take our practice into action and to allow ourselves to be happy. So I trust those of you who were here last week or who heard our talk uh, had many opportunities to experience that heritage of happiness that has been such a gift to us. So thank you, Martha, for, for sharing that reading. And as I said, usually there's someone up here introducing the speaker, but as I was working on this talk on spiritual integrity and what that means in my life and how it shows up for me, I started replaying the intro that my son did for me in January, and he did a marvelous job, if I do say so myself. But as I was thinking about the labels and the stories that he shared with you about me, I had to start asking, or I started asking myself, who am I? Like, who am I? And, and even more so because I had been in a place of some discomfort and discontent, Mary Morrissey's word, in my life, probably for the last six months, you know, what is my purpose? Um, now that I'm starting the second half of my life, today I am 60 years and two weeks and I foresee another 60 years and two weeks in front of me. But am I really those labels and stories that have defined me over 60 years? Labels and stories that I gave myself and that other people gave me? Um, or am I that I am that I am that Reverend Bonnie ha spoke about the last two weeks? So who am I? But even more important, that question that had been pulling at me for the last six months is, now what? What, is, what does the rest of my life look like? What is my true path? And my title for today, I had to give a title on Monday, and um, I stayed up all night thinking about that. And I came up with traveling from truth ache to true path, and then I added this, following the spiritual integrity road, not the yellow brick road, but the spiritual integrity road. So as I started thinking about who I was over the last couple of months, I realized that I needed to erase some of those labels that I had been given or had been given me and that were no longer true, or that I needed to, to, to dig deep down and, and get to the very core of who I saw as myself. And so the first thing I erased off my label board was my given name. And when I was born, my parents named me Teresa Cecilia Valenzuela. So I erased that off my label board. I erased off a uh, retiree. I've been retired for a little bit over two years. And, and practitioner, I was licensed two years ago. And, and teacher and student, employee. I was just erasing all these, those things that I had defined myself over the last 60 years. Um, mother, 
uh, though I'm still a mother, <laughs> you know, erase that because I was really wanting to see and get down to the basic part of who I, who I am. Uh, I erased um, sister, daughter, and female. And so where I found myself was at a point where, where I found myself was reminding me who and what I truly am. And that is an individualized expression of the divine, creative, infinite mind. On this earth, wearing this earth suit, as Mary Morrissey would call it, uh, obviously I'm in the middle of my prosperity plus one. That's changed my life many times over. But in this month's uh, Science of Mind magazine, Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones calls it living in the human suit. And so this is how I know there is one heart, one mind working for me. Because I had not read his article on spiritual integrity till Friday morning. And I had been grappling with that whole idea of erasing these definers in my life to get down to, to know who I really truly am and what is the next path for my life. So Friday morning, I open up, and in his article, second page, first paragraph, he has written, while who we are may be defined by the many labels we wear, our name, gender, age, job title, marital status, personality, and so on, what we are is a singular, sacred being, an individuated point of God's omnipresence, the self, with a big S, living in a human skin. So that's how my faith works for me. Um, what a coinky dink, right? Oh, I don't use that term anymore. <laughs> so now I'm at that point of, of knowing and remembering that I am that individualized expression of divine, creative, infinite mind, and I've, I'm releasing those labels and stories that have defined me for 60 plus years. And so I ask you, if you're willing to do some traveling with me this morning, traveling from truth ache to true path, following the spiritual road of integrity. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So uh, February 1st, I started the 21 Happiness Day Challenge. I'm always up for a challenge. And it was through projecthappiness.com. And so every day through the month of 21 days, you would receive an email, and it would have a uh, quote and then a little um, exercise for you to do that day, a reflection, to push you into that habit of, of being happy, right? And so I certainly want that in my life. I signed up for all, I mean, I'm so busy uh, doing all of these <laughs> meditations, and, and so you'll find that humorous in a minute. So on day 14, the quote that popped up was a definition of a word that I had never heard of, and I, 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 I'd never read about. It was is a new word in my in my dictionary, and the word was truth ache. And it's from a book by Jeff Brown, Soul Shaping. And as any good student, I've, I uh, ordered all three of his books. He had a new book that came out Friday called Grounded Spirituality, which uh, seems to be very interesting, uh, his, his perspective on organized religion. But that was the quote that popped up that day. And this was the first two lines of the definition of truth ache. What we experience internally when we are not honoring our soul purpose or simply living a lie in relationships or other areas of our lives. It stopped me, right, dead in my tracks. Because I was in a space of trying to figure out what my next step would be in my life, right? Uh, uh, asking myself, what's my purpose? What's my calling? Um, I hate to use the B word, but I was sort of bored. Uh, and, you know, I went to Spain for two weeks in October, and my vision before that had been to move, retire and move to Spain. And after living there and missing <laughs> Las Cruces and all my families, I decided that that might be a dream that wasn't meant for me. Um, 
but I came back and I, I, I felt like I needed to be on some kind of path. And, and I didn't miss being a public school teacher. You know, I'd been retired and as soon as I retired, I became a licensed practitioner. I was events coordinator here for six months. Uh, I started practicing yoga three or four times a week. That was my physical exercise. Uh, or as Reverend Bonnie called it, practicing physical strength, right? Um, uh, and I've, I volunteer in a variety of ways in the community. I facilitate classes here at CSL. I got to travel to Mexico and Spain. And, and so I have, I have this amazing retired life, right? Um, but I still felt something was missing. And, and I felt that somehow I was missing a sole purpose. And if I was being entirely honest with myself and I'm going to be entirely honest with you, is I was feeling half empty. Um, I was looking in many different way, areas to find out what that calling was, and, and by erasing those definers, um, I was hoping to move closer to something that felt right within my soul. Jeff Brown goes on to say, quote on defining truth ache although truth ache sometimes painful although embracing it may well force us to turn our habitual patterns upside down in order to effect change the truth ache contains the seeds of our transformation it is a blessing in disguise a call to a deeper and more authentic path so wait. <laughs> so I already use the spiritual tools. You know, uh, Reverend Bonnie gave us a list of the spiritual tools to create that strong structure, you know, to be in that spiritual integrity that we work towards. You know, I meditate. Um, I do prayer, um, spiritual readings. I hang out with people who help me develop spiritually. I... I start my day with gratitude and and since prosperity plus one i'm ending my day in gratitude sort of sandwiching myself in and i work at forgiveness forgiving myself and and working on amends with other people just to have that strength so why if i'm doing the work am i still feeling at a loss am i why am i still feeling half empty why was I still having to search for that true path? Big T, big P. Um, then another word came across in his reading. He has a dictionary in back, and the word was enrealment. And it was too long to type, so I'm going to read it directly out of the book. Enrealment. The idea that a more heightened consciousness is not all about the light, as enlightenment, implies, but is about becoming more real, more genuinely here in all aspects, shadow and light, earth and sky, grocery list and unity consciousness. At the heart of enrealment is a quest for a more inclusive consciousness, an attempt to live in all aspects of reality simultaneously rather than only those realms that feel the most comfortable. By living in the real, our experience of the moment is more complete, our ascension more true. Be real now. I've always wanted to do that. So real and authentic. Hmm. So maybe over the last six months, maybe I hadn't been tapping in to the real me as I was trying to answer those questions. Maybe I wasn't tapping in to that authentic me. Maybe the truth ache that I was experiencing, that loss of knowing what's next in my life, lay in the fact that there was a shift going on within me. A shift into that space 
of truly being that individualized, divine, creative, infinite mind. So spiritual integrity, and and, uh, we heard how that has been an uh, an important word with our minister over the years as she has uh, worked in developing her own spiritual growth. And that is a word I love throwing around over the last 11 years, right? Integrity. And, um, you know, as I become or became more familiar with Jeff Brown's work, um, what I realize is that for me to walk in that space of spiritual integrity, I have to do some deep soul level work in order to move from truth ache to true path. I realized that my confusion or feelings of being half empty was not based on the reality of my life. It was based on some idea that was deep within me that I had to label and define myself I had to label and define my purpose in life. The idea that my true path, this is the idea I had deep within me, that my true path should be clear, which, you know, we use clear in the song, right? Should be clear, smooth, be some worthy intention, uh, should be world-changing, earth-shattering, right? So when when I was looking and thinking about my true path, those were the things that was part of my structure. Those were the things that were uh, engulfing me in this truth ache. But if I truly believe, if I truly have faith that I already have everything I need within me, how did I get to that space of feeling half empty? How did I get to that space of feeling like I didn't know what my next path would be or would look like? And this is what I have realized and come to understand over the last few weeks and actually days. I had been spending so much time looking outside here for integrity, for spiritual integrity whether you were in integrity or I was in integrity, but it was outside of myself. What I had forgotten is that spiritual integrity is within me. Always. I must be willing to be that real, authentic self to all of you and to myself because I truly know that everything begins from within. And all that I am begins from within and radiates out to people, places, and things like a domino effect. You heard during announcements that the season for nonviolence has a weekly Sunday meditation uh, at 1230. And we are using the curriculum from CSL that was developed with the idea that if we are going to be advocates of peace, we first must be peace. And aside from the meditations, we've done some, for me at least, difficult work in there, really looking within, doing some more core digging, reflecting on who we really are. So what that means to me is that if I want to move into that space of really knowing who I am at all times, that divine creative, right, mind, infinite mind, then I must continue to do the hard work within myself and not be so worried about what's happening outside of me. By being willing to work through my truth aches, I am living in spiritual integrity. I am being spiritual integrity. 
and all the attributes that I include in my spiritual mind treatment during the recognition part of the prayer, right, rec recognizing the divine is loving and kind, joyful, compassionate, abundant and prosperous, I see in myself, but I must also be able and willing to be those things to myself. I must be able to be loving to myself and kind to myself and living in that space of knowing about what prosperity and abundance in all areas of my life actually looks like. So after the last two months of traveling from my truth ache to true path, following the spiritual integrity road, this is what has come into my heart. I need to be spiritual integrity. Once I shift to that place of being spiritual integrity, it just flows from within me to without. I don't know about you, but when I practice something, I, I tend to um, either stumble and fall or forget what I'm practicing. I, I, I practice yoga, but I took six months off. I practice eating healthy, uh, but I had a Snickers bar last night, <laughs> or maybe two. Um, so, so for me, practicing something just doesn't always work into, into every moment of my life. So I must be, for myself, I must be spiritual integrity. That's short, that's sweet. I must be spiritual integrity. And as I be spiritual integrity, and as I am willing to release those labels and stories that uh, have defined me for so long, I can then shift into that place of remembering the truth of who I am, that individualized, d divine, creative, infinite mind. And then I was brought back to my roots. Friday morning was a gangbuster in my house. Uh, so I think I mentioned this when I spoke last time, but I am reading the textbook, Science of Mind textbook, in one year. Every day there's a reading. So I, Friday morning, uh, right, because I'm doing the spiritual practices. <laughs> <laughs> um, I come to day 15, and there's four pages that they expect us to read. Do these people not know I have a talk to get ready on Sunday? But this is how spirit works in my life. On page 72, uh, the chapter is the principles of successful living, demonstrating the law. Ernest Holmes speaks to me. Our part is to be ready and willing to be guided into truth and liberty. If in the making of a demonstration it becomes necessary to change our mode of living, then the law will point the way and we will follow. Our correct choice will be part of the working of the law. All doubt and fear must go. And in their place must come faith and confidence. For we shall be led by the Spirit into all good. People often say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make a choice. We must realize that there is an intelligence within us that does know. This guidance is just as true in India, where people are Buddhists, as it is in America, where people are Christians. It was just as true 10,000 years ago before the advent of Christianity as it will be 10,000 years hence. Insofar as we are going to make this thing work, it is because we contact universal laws which run through every age and race and which answer every person. If we can see this, we shall be able to do away with a great deal of superstitious Super, superstition and ignorance, and ignorance just meaning not knowing. 
Let each individual immediately and directly and in his own integrity, in his own spiritual integrity, approach the law that is. There is no medium between us and the universal mind except our own thought. In such degree as we place a medium, we have to absorb that medium before we can make a direct approach. The Bible says there is no mediator between God and man except Christ. Christ means the truth about ourselves, about being real, about who we are, about being authentic, about who we are. So if we have to make a choice and feel we do not know which or what to choose, we must still be in our own consciousness and know and know that the spirit within us knows which of these ways is the right and most constructive way and will guide us. Brought me back to my roots. Hmm. As Glinda said to Dorothy, you've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. I just had to remember the truth of who I am. So looking back over the last six months of feeling half empty, of finding Jeff Brown's work, um, and looking into those words, right, truth, ache, and in real mint, I've had to do some, some deep soul cleansing on my own part. I had to release some of those defining labels and releasing those old stories which no longer serve me that I was still carrying in my backpack. And two labels that come to mind is mother. So I'm still a mother, but today... How that defines me is different than five years ago. My children, <laughs> who are no longer children, they're 35 and my twins are 31, they don't call me as often to put out fires. Thank you. Um, they, they are working at adulting, right? So that role of mom, whole new definition in my household. Some days I'm, I'm really hilariously happy about it, and other days, you know, I miss um, cleaning off the scraped knees and, and whatever, um, driving them to all their, <laughs> their after-school activities. I'm not sure. But so that role, that defining label, I, I, I'm ready to give it up. And then through this work, what I found is my label of being a bilingual early childhood educator. And though I don't miss doing what I did for so many years, that's not who I am anymore. And so I, n I need to be willing to release that. These are two things that were deep within me that I thought were fine, but somehow still had their, their nails, right? Like, I was just holding on to them. I needed to be asked to speak today in order to work through all this. I'm not sure, I don't know, <laughs> how spirit would have worked in my life. But uh, preparing for this day and all of the things that have happened over the last two months, um, yeah, all of these things helped me to look within and to flush out what the words spiritual integrity really mean in my life and how spiritual integrity plays out and shows up for me. I needed all of these things to occur. I needed to, for Friday morning to read Science of Mind, for Ernest to remind me what the answer was to my, <laughs> my discomfort. Um, I needed all of these things to happen in my life to shift back into remembering who and what I am an individualized expression of divine, creative, infinite mind. Of being, being spiritual integrity. And all of this to help relax into my next true path of my amazing life and purpose. 
So I get to give you all homework today. A challenge. So this is what I'm asking for each and every one of you, if you're willing to, to participate, is that every day when you wake up, that you remind yourself that you are, that you are at your core, that individualized expression of divine, creative, infinite mind, and that you are spiritual integrity. And one more quote from the Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home, or for me, there's no place like the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces. And so it is.